battled through some rough patches this season. So it now comes down to how they're going to finish. Not out of it. Can't afford any more missteps, though. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Daxton Hill there to make the stop on defense. And I think that's going to go down as no gain, but that doesn't seem fair for the effort that was presented on that play. That should go down as a loss. I know, I'm a defensive guy, but you got to like the play that was made. He made a lot of those plays last week. He was AFC Defensive Player of the Week, picking up where he left off. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. They come up to the line now facing a third and ten after the incompletion. Here's Tannehill. And the open receiver, it's Robert Woods. And he will get him down a couple yards shy of the first down marker. A nice tackle coming up from his free safety spot. On fourth down, here's Brian Anger now to kick this one away. Back deep, Trent Taylor. And the win last week punted four times as this one's away. And take it right on the 30. A nice punt, but a good run back as well of 13 yards. And the Bengals take over first and 10. And the Bengals getting set for their first possession of the ball game and leading them out in his third season. Really the face of Cincinnati football, Joe Burrow. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. The numbers for Mixon last week, 19 carries, 79 yards. When a winning streak stretches this far, you start to wonder if a team is truly unstoppable. And here's a guy who's been very much in legs that have helped drive this team to wins week after week. And even when teams have keyed on him and tried to slow him down, he's still gotten the job done enough to avoid a loss. Talking with him in pregame, though, he thinks that this week could be his biggest week yet. So, Charles, you talk about this offense, how well they played. I mean, the defense, too, really. But they're sitting at 10-0 now on the year. 4-0, 5-0, that's nice. But once you start hitting double digits with these wins and no losses, I think the seriousness of the situation, it just has to ramp up. Yeah, and when you do say 10-0, it can't scare you as a team. Just think about it this way. For most of the year, they've been playing to win their division and get to the playoffs. Now the playoffs are just about a foregone conclusion. So now they have to down-focus their thoughts about getting home field advantage and finishing unbeaten, and they need to make sure they keep it in that order. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And he'll get this just inside the 30-yard line. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Again, it's Mixon. And he is going to get this close to the first down marker as he's brought down at the Titans 22. Come on, right? They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. If you make the stop there, maybe you hold him to three on this opening drive. They didn't get the stop. Yeah, new set of downs now. Now you're worried about, just as you pointed out, not just giving up three, possibly giving up six. Let's see what they decide to do here because they've got to change up what they have been doing. It hasn't been working. After one, seven, nothing. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Bengals go. in control of the football as they are looking at a second and five situation. Over the middle, he finds Higgins. And the Bengals are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. Here we go. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook. The oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Mix it. We'll get about halfway there as he takes this from the four down to the two. Here we go, here we go. From the two now, second and goal. Mixon again, and he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. Joe Mixon with his 13th rushing touchdown on the year, and the Bengals have taken a two-touchdown lead now.
That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of the season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that'll make the score 14 to zip. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he will make it back to the 15, and that's it. Good coverage there by the kick team. Well, the final weekend of November is upon us. Boy, can you believe December right around the corner? It always seems to get here quickly. But coming up tonight, we wrap up the holiday weekend with the Packers and Eagles from Philly at 820 Eastern. Then tomorrow night, we wrap up Cyber Monday with the Steelers and Colts from Indianapolis. Tannehill's throw pulled in by Woods and out of bounds across the 15-yard line. So just three yards on the completion there, and it'll be second down. Tannehill. Over the middle, into the hands of Burks. And mark him down way up close to the 40 at the 39. A gain there of 21 yards. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they act panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They were starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. Play action. It's Tannehill. Into the hands of his tight end, Jeff Swain. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. A little too much extracurricular there. When you have a game with a lot of contact, tensions are going to run pretty high. You're going to be emotional, but you have to harness it somehow. And he didn't on that play. On first and 10, Tannehill. He gets it to Burks again. And he'll be marked down at about the 26-yard line. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think of the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. And I understand why they look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. On second down, here's a run from Haskins. Five yards, now it's third and five. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Able to hook up with Williams here on the out route. And he is out of bounds. Looks like right at the 15. First target, first catch, and a first down. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver trying to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out, to the sideline, and make a catch. Throwing on first down. This one lines up to be incomplete. This is what Rain remembers. When I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out high. They expected it and got there and popped it free. Throwing again on second and ten. Tannehill. And his throw's going to be incomplete. That's a big force in completion there to bring up third and long. And this defense can still salvage a little momentum by forcing them to kick a field goal. Because just a few plays ago, it looked like they were headed towards the end zone. Got a man, and it's taken in for a Titans touchdown. Emmanuel Sanders. His second touchdown on the season. And the Titans have got it back to within a score. Oh, such great concentration there, going right up against the side of the end zone, but able to get the feet in bounds. <laughs> 
There are so many things that go into that catch, and you just mentioned the concentration, being able to catch the football, get your feet down, hang on to it all the way through the process of the catch. That was a phenomenal play. On for the point after is Randy Bullock. Makes it 14 to 7. Go, 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 go. Nine plays in all. And it results in the end, the Titans touchdown. There's the Titan kick team as they run up and send this one away. And Williams going to sit on this one. It'll be a touchback. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. Here we go. And it's only November, but the playoffs, we know how it works. They'll be here before you know it. If it ended today, they would be the number one seed. And that's a great spot to be in, but I love the phrase, if it ended today. And I guarantee you, that's what they've discussed. And the well, he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And all the way in for a Cincinnati score. Joe Mixon with his 14th touchdown of the year, second of the game. And the Bengals are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. McPherson on for the point after. It's good, and it is now 21-7. to seven. One of the shortest drives you'll ever see. One play, 75 yards, six points.